Hi guys, this is Drew Putani here from PhoneArena.com bringing you an unboxing of the U Euphoria. Now this particular device serves as an entry level companion to the U Eureka that was launched earlier this year. Um, the box contains itself, uh, we'll be talking about that. We'll also give you a quick rundown of the device itself. Now the box packaging is very similar to the likes of devices from Xiaomi and the U Euphoria does compete with the Xiaomi Redmi series of phones. You've got minimal branding of the, of the brand itself, which is U, and the name of the phone, which is Euphoria. Now, this particular name was chosen by U, that is the readers, the consumers of this series of devices. Uh, you'll see that you've got Cyanogen branding at the bottom. Now, what this means is that this particular phone is powered by Cyanogen Mod 12. Uh, this is a very stock-like interface, uh, a very stock build of Android, and it adds a lot of features on top of it. We'll be talking about that in the in-depth review, but for now, let's move to the back of the packaging. Now, you've got the entire spec list listed at the back. You've got the IMEI numbers, and you've got the standard sticker, which includes the import data and the pricing. Uh, nothing really extraordinary. Uh, so let's move to what's uh, the cool part here. What we're here for, which is the unboxing of the handset. You'll notice that up right and center is the handset itself. This is the U Euphoria. Removing it from the plastic cover, there you go, that's the handset itself. But we'll be coming back to this shortly. Before that, we'll see what else is included in the packaging of the U Euphoria. Within the packaging is an envelope like uh, packaging material that is included and this has the uh, standard scratch card that is included with practically every smartphone these days. There's also a microfiber cloth which is handy and a hard card like material included which lets you easily apply the scratch card. Other than that we've got a small special features guide which basically talks about some of the enhancements made in Cyanogen Mod. It includes the rich dialer, and the email system application. Moving on, you've got the standard micro USB cable that you would expect to find with any smartphone. You've also got earbuds and earphones. And last, you've got the charger. It's a standard USB charger. It's rated for 1.5 amperes, which should be fairly sufficient to power up the uh, 2230 mAh battery in say about an hour and a half or so. So now that we've taken a look at the packaging contents, uh, let's take a, a quick roundabout of the phone itself. Now here we've got the phone itself, the U Euphoria has a 5 inch 720p display. Uh, it's got a metal build and um, U has talked a lot about the design and the amount of effort gone that has gone behind that. Um, well, on the face of it, the back of it is plastic, the metal bit is basically just the bezel running around the body of the phone. The front is of course plastic, it's got Gorilla Glass on top of it, Gorilla Glass 3. You've got the 5 megapixel front facing camera and proximity sensor here. There are gaps in the metal build as well, which is basically, basically there just to aid the antenna performance. Um, at least that's what we imagine it is for. You've got the 3.5mm audio jack on top, while at the bottom you've got the micro USB port. Uh, we've got the 8 megapixel camera over here, now this is an autofocus module. A special design feature that you really uh, emphasized about was the Saturn ring design and that's what they're calling it. It is basically just a small ring running around the camera module. Em uh, embedded within that is the single LED flash. Nothing really special, nothing particularly extraordinary but it does look unique compared to some of the other devices out there. Over on the side you've got the volume rocker up and down and in the middle of it is the power button. These buttons are plastic though they've been finished in a chrome like material. Opening up the rear panel this is a very I would say it's a very flimsy plastic panel but um, we know about the longevity and how well it fares in the uh, long run over the course of a review. You've got a 2230 mAh battery. There's two SIM card slots. Now this particular phone is LTE compatible, though we imagine that's only on SIM 1. There's also the micro SD card slot. The battery itself is removable. So if that's something that's important for you, you'll be delighted to know that. 
let's shut this up and uh, maybe get the phone powered on. Removing the protective screen guard over here. Let's see how the boot times are. So it's got the U logo over here, powered by Android. This is running Sand Engine Mod 12, which is based on Android Lollipop. As you can see, uh, the boot times aren't really that bad. We've already got you know, moved on to the Cyanogen logo and very soon we should be booted up right into the phone itself. This particular phone is running on Snapdragon uh, on a Snapdragon 410 processor which is clocked at 1.2 GHz. There's 2 GB of RAM on board and 16 GB of storage and as you can as you saw at the back, you can upgrade that via the micro SD card slot. We'll also just find out about how much uh, free storage is available on this handset on the first boot. There you go, we are starting up with the uh, Sandigen mod. We're going to skip through most of these uh, initial steps because we really want to just get down into the interface itself. So there you go, that's the Sandigen mod 12 interface. It's a completely custom ROM that's running on this handset. Uh, this also means that you'll be getting the latest updates as soon as they are out for Sandigen mod and that's generally really fast. Now uh, this um, operating system currently is based on Android Lollipop. It's very nice, fast and fluid once the system completely just gets booted up. Uh, let's take a look at what is the amount of storage that's available at first boot. So moving down the settings menu. We get to the storage option. As you can see, out of 16 GB of built-in storage, there's about 11 GB that's available at first boot. Uh, that's uh, pretty decent. There's also 2 GB of RAM on board, which means that multitasking is really not going to be a problem over here. The Snapdragon 410 processor is also uh, fairly beefy enough to keep things nice and snappy all around. Uh, the Cyanogen mod operating system comes with a themes option, which you can use if you get bored of the default skin. And there's also a lot, lot of custom applications that are pre-installed on this phone. So, it's uh, not really intrusive. There's some interesting additions over here, but if you want to get rid of them, you can do so as well. So overall, the uh, U Euphoria looks like quite an interesting handset for 6,999 rupees. Uh, we are really convinced by the operating system on board, but then again, that's possibly the only uh, factor that's going in its favor. The build quality isn't the best. In fact, the plastics feel a little flimsy. Uh, the metal build that uh, has been really emphasized isn't really all that much metal all around anyway. Uh, we'll be having a full review of this handset very soon where we'll talk about the other aspects, the day-to-day -day usage, the battery life, the camera capabilities. Uh, but for now, we'd, re we'd recommend that you hold off and read the reviews of the U Euphoria first before investing in this handset because um, on the face of it, the build really doesn't seem all that great as compared to the likes of the Redmi series of phones or for that matter even the Lenovo A6000 Plus. This particular phone is priced at Rs. 6,999. We'll have full review soon but for now this was the unboxing. If you have any comments and if you have any questions about this handset, Please do let us know in the comment section and we'll be sure to cover that in the review as well as on YouTube itself. Thanks for watching. This was Dhruv from PhoneArena.com.